Yes, President Michael D. Higgins once again about to meet today's finalists, accompanied by Uchtron Common Luke Glasgow, Liam O'Neill. At first, it'll be the defending champions who now find themselves playing a, a sixth rather than a fourth match to retain the Liam McCarthy Cup. And uh, straight away, President Higgins goes to the team captain, Owen Larkin, set to do the introductions. It's his eighth championship season. And in this lineup are plenty of former All Ireland captains Jackie Turrell, 2006, Henry Shefflin the following year. Michael Fenley was the captain in uh, 90, 2009 even though he didn't start that final. TJ Reid was skipper in uh, 2010, and Tip won, of course, and Brian Hogan lifted the McCarthy Cup last year. And there's big Walter Welch there, six foot four inches, Henry Shefflin hoping to win his ninth All-Ireland medal this afternoon. The referee today, as we see the Liam McCarthy Cup on uh, show here at the Hogan stand, referee James McGrath from the Turin Club in Westmead, the linesman are John Sexton from Cork and Barry Kelly, who refereed the drawn match, and the sideline official is James Owens. The umpires are Tom McNicholas, David Hennessy, Johnny Fitzpatrick and David Clune. Big day for all of those, and we wish them the very, very best. On a beautifully sunny afternoon now, it's Galway's captain Fergal Moore, a 30-year-old physiotherapist, Introducing players who at least now have the experience of being here before and they've come from a 25-point league trouncing in April at the hands of Kilkenny to a stage where they've made the All-Ireland champions appear far from invincible. Now we're beating them in September, well that's the sport's biggest challenge. And there you see Niall Burke and uh, Cyril Donnellan, number 12, Damian Hayes, who's taken off in the draw match three weeks ago. There's Big Joe Canning, so much talked about him, and finally James Regan. And the president has met both teams, that's the initial formality completed. Will President Higgins be watching later as uh, that McCarthy Cup is presented around about five o'clock by Liam O'Neill to another Galway man? Or will Kilkenny complete another two in a row as the presidential party make their way up into the Ord Corley section? It's an intriguing prospect and one we're greatly looking forward to. outpouring of emotion all set for Galway against Kilkenny the sequel it may be game two in the final but it's game three in the 2012 championship saga we've had a lot of interesting comment and debate now it's time for the players to make their own statement the match referee is James McGrath from Westmeath his first All-Ireland senior final and he gets the match underway and uh, it is Kilkenny who won the toss and opting to play from left to right in the first half and getting it straight into the attack and uh, Richie Hogan has gone in towards the full forward position at the very beginning of this match, quite a switch there but that might be just for starters. Yeah, well it looks like to me, we predicted as Kilkenny have gone back to their, their, their normal formation the players, six backs playing in their positions uh, Killian Buckley has gone to the middle of the field and I see Earl Italian down straight away uh, with an ankle he was down several times the last day with that same ankle and uh, you know that's worrying straight away just at the very start of the game yeah, he had, uh, he had been fouled, I think, by one of the Kilkenny players in the very early stages of the original final three weeks ago, and he was uh, in need of treatment on a few occasions. Strongly built fellow, he played on a one-man of the match, you might remember. Well, we've got a line ball which is going to be taken for Galway by Johnny Cohen. Just waiting for the uh, medical personnel to make their way off. Sun in the eyes there of uh, Kilkenny centre half back Brian Hogan. There was some holding, and uh, it's going to be a free. Kilkenny now will be anxious to make a right good start here, something which they haven't managed to do really over the uh, previous two championship games with Galway. 
Yeah, I see David Burke there, the son, wasn't facing the ball. And I see Richie Hogan at full forward, there, as you mentioned, he's gone in on Kevin Hines. He's obviously a great finisher, and they're hoping that something will break for him in there and he'll put away a goal. Paul Murphy is the taker here. It's a big, huge one in. First, really, a bit of pressure there on James Scahill, and it's a little bit worrying coming into this match with a shoulder injury. There was no ligament damage, I'm told, done on Friday, but it is worrying having to come into a final like this, playing with a painkiller and uh, not being able to use your shoulders properly. Well, absolutely. Just difficult ball and he took no chances just kicked it away he, he wasn't anxious to get maybe involved in a tussle early on Michael Fennelly playing into the goal where he scored uh, a goal last year in the All-Ireland final against Tipperary as it hots up there and uh, one of the things about uh, replays of course is that by their very nature they can be full of tension there are issues, there are individual duels, I suppose, carried over into the second match, and, of course, a different referee presiding over it as well. Yeah, well, no doubt about that. David Collins swung Michael Fenley around, and a little bit of... After it, Andy Smith is a tough customer, and uh, but not major, and Henry now... A, a difficult free, I often think, with a free-taker, it's nice to get a handy one, uh, maybe at the start. This is out near the sideline on 21. Well, it's that close to the sideline, which means it is still a very good... 40 metres, I would think, from the target. Very acute angle. Henry seeking to put Kilkenny in front right from the outset here. And he's put that one away to the right-hand side, and it's a missed opportunity. But as Michael Dagnall was saying, that was a very difficult free. Yeah, we've all Larkin right half-forward, with Henry Sheffield at centre-forward again, and there was some talk that Fergal Moore would move, but he has not Tony Ogas on him, and TJ Reid in the other corner, Richie Power corner forward, and Walter Welch in the corner with the smallest member of the full forward line, Richie Hogan, at full forward, interesting for Kilkenny. Yeah, it's Walter Welsh corner forward as uh, Brian Hogan takes it down here. Held once again, and he's won a couple of balls, and he's won a free out. And once again, it's got to be Paul Murphy who will take this. Caught it brilliantly in the air, sun into his eyes. So it's not going to be terribly easy for this opening half for those half backs and full backs of Kilkenny facing into that wind and into that sunlight. Into Henry Shafflin it comes. Caught well here by Tony O'Gregan under pressure there from Richie Hogan. Got the ball away, very near the far sideline. And that uh, first line ball over there was going to be to Kilkenny following that clearance. And Kilkenny organising their defence here in familiar fashion. So Kieran Joyce there wearing number seven, operating at left half back, going along the traditional lines. And that's 65 metres out from his own end line and a largely still afternoon at Croke Park. Kieran Joyce inside towards Henry Shefflin, trying to get it up onto his stick, having difficulty with that. Out it comes again towards Andy Smith, and Smith sets Galway away, all the way down towards Joe Canning, two players there marking, and one of them is JJ Delaney, not a good clearance, out only as far as Niall Burke. Picked up here by Cyril Donnellan. Donnellan trying to get a bit of latitude here, back it goes towards Niall Burke, little block on it, comes to Tommy Welsh, and Tommy Welsh diagonally across field, over towards the uh, left half forward TJ Reid, wearing number 13. And again, the referee sees a push here, and it's got to be a free for Galway. This time, I think the man doing the pushing was TJ Reid. Yeah, good call again, you have to say James McGrath, very sharp in the first few minutes, picked up um, that foul there from TJ Reid, and just interesting there, Jeremy Mom to go looking at Galway, they had only one player within 50 yards of goals, that was Joe Canning, but Paul Murphy had dropped back along with JJ Delaney, and they had two on one on him, and the ball was played in over his head. If they're going to drag men out the field, they have to play the ball into the advantage of Joe Canning inside instead of in over his head. Interesting that the Galway team doctor, Dan Murphy, has been out already to attend to Earl Italian, as we saw earlier, and Andy Smith as well. Joe Canning's going to take this from his own 65-metre line, looking for the first score of the match here for Galway, and he positions it perfectly. First score of the game comes in the sixth minute from a free. Joe Canning, the man who puts it over. Well, he got a goal and a point in 90 seconds in the drawn match. That's what happened a little while ago there involving Andy Smith. Late challenge there on him by Richie Hogan. That was the free. Yeah, a great free from Joe Canning. Went miles over the bar and it was from 100 yards out. Once again, it is the half-back here. Niall Donoghue trying to get it for Galway. And uh, the uh, linesman signals that it's going to be a line ball downfield from the Davin end side. Johnny Cohen ready to take this. Johnny, who is uh, now teaching in uh, St. Bridget's and Loch Ray, where David Burke is also a colleague. Out it comes here. 
Running into trouble there, however, Niall Donoghue, leaving it behind as far as Owen Larkin. And Owen Larkin fouled as he was going through. Chance of an equaliser here coming up for Kilkenny. And it'll be Henry Shefflin, I imagine, who will stand over it in the end. Yeah, Niall Donoghue caught a possession, Ger, uh, a bit of an experience shot. He really should have turned back. Johnny Cohen was loose behind him and Owen Larkin won it there. Interesting how Henry Shefflin uh, didn't take the first couple of frees in the original match. That was entrusted to Richie Parvin. He's taking over here. And that's one out of two, and the teams are level. Henry Shefflin pulling this one over. It was an easier free. Nearly seven minutes are gone. Both uh, points coming from freeze in this replayed 2012 All Ireland hurling final. 82,000 people present. They were saying the demand for tickets was even greater than the uh, original fixture played at the beginning of September. James Scahill pocking it out. Beautifully caught here under pressure by Cyril Donlan. Gets away from his man. He put a duel in the past with Tommy Welsh. Got five points in the Leinster final off him. That's uh, broken down, however. And now it comes once again. That time it was Killian Buckley trying to get it forward one-handed. Back into the middle of the field here. Busy as ever is the Damien Hayes. Went out there for a bit of space, but uh, there's a gap back in there where Hayes might have been. And it enables the cornerback to come away with it. And Jackie Tyrrell makes a good clearance 60 metres down the field towards Walter Welch, playing in his debut here in this All Ireland hurling final. Niall Donahue gets the clearance, gets it away down the field once again. Once more, the sun in the eyes of the backs here. And this time it is uh, Kieran Joyce who got that ball away under pressure here. The go away half backs that did very well with that got it back downfield again towards Cyril Donlan standing his ground here looking for a point from play but that one just drifts away at the last moment yeah but that's a good start by Cyril Donlan and Tommy Walsh are two high balls you don't see Tommy being beat too often and you can see the importance of James Scahill's puck out he varies them so well and uh, that was a tactic to last to trying to pick out Cyril Donlan coming out to those balls and you know, he'll take confidence from that as well as will Cyril Donlan even though that went nearly wide Killian Buckley in midfield up there against uh, Irla Tanyan. That's one of the interesting matchups. Here comes Michael Fennelly. Fennelly has been marked today by Andy Smith. Out for that one came Henry Shefflin. There was a push, and the referee signals for a free. Early indications that some of the uh, Galway backs could be in difficulty, especially if Henry starts drifting away out and pulls Tony O'Gregan out of position. Right now, as Henry takes this, Tony Ogre's gone back onto the goal line to assist James Skehel, just in case it drops short. From right in the middle of the field, Henry Shefflin looking for his first or his second point of the match. And uh, Galway go behind here to Kilkenny. Henry Shefflin getting his second pointed free. Well, he'd be much, much happier with the start that they've made here. But they were uh, showing encouraging signs also at the beginning of the original All-Ireland final and then fell away for the last 25 minutes of the first half. And Kilkenny will be concerned to make sure that doesn't happen again. Fergal Moore, huge one all the way down towards David Burke, racing there with Jackie Tyrrell. There was a push, the referee says free out. David Burke is incensed. The point has been made in the last uh, couple of days in the build-up to this that the players really now have to forget about the occasion. It's all now about winning a match. Yeah, there's the... You can see David Burke pull jacket hurls, hurl out of his hand, but a lot of frees going against him, it can be frustrating. Yeah, they have to settle down. I, do, I feel there's not as much t tension today, Jerry, as there was the last... There was an awful lot of nervousness, particularly in Kilkenny's play, and it, the, both, Kilkenny seemed to be much more relaxed, and it's taken Galway a little time to settle in as well. Would you expect that? David Herity's free. Beyond Andy Smith. That was David Collins trying to knock it down, but it's TJ Reid who got there first. Henry Shefflin now in there towards Walter Welch. The big man, he's six foot four inches tall, 15 stone, under 21 this year. Like Eddie Kerr making his debut in an All Ireland final. And Teddy McCarthy, of course, by the way, in 1986. That's back there, and that shot has gone to the left and it's gone wide. And it's a missed opportunity. And it was by Richie Hogan, finding himself in the forwards. No great surprise there. Yeah, great catch by TJ Reid, but great covering again by Earl Tanyan. He did so much of it the last day, and you know a lot of pressure on the ball uh, carrier at all times there, and Richie Hogan had plenty of time. He should have put it over in a bad way. I think that's one thing maybe that Galway haven't expected, to find Richie Hogan actually playing at full forward. James Skehel. Big, huge one down. Again, it's taken there by Kieran Joyce in as far as TJ Reid. Very classy hurler. Nicely forward here, and that is Walter Walsh. 
and that will do his confidence a power of good on his debut putting Kilkenny two in front Kilkenny three Galway one well this is this could work out to be a master stroke uh, Walter Walsh has been put in specifically to keep Johnny Cohen out of the game he's been Galway's most influential back all summer he's sweeping up covering picking up loose ball and Walter Walsh is in there a big man won a great ball already a minute ago and now that one over the bar Johnny Cohen did switch there with uh, Fergal Moore. Moore is across at right corner back where he's picking up uh, Richie Power. Anthony Cunningham facing a replay against a team in black and amber once again. It happened last March for him when he was uh, coaching the uh, football team from Westmead, Gary Castle, against Crossford Glen Rangers through the first day, but uh, suffered a heavy defeat in the replay. That's gone straight here as far as Cyril Donnellan. Now Niall Donoghue trying to slip the ball outside and succeeding as far as Niall Burke. Into traffic straight away, down he went and the referee says it wasn't a fair shoulder to shoulder on the part of Jackie Tyrrell. And it's going to be a free to Galway and a chance for them then to get to within a point of Kilkenny once again. Joe Canning will take it. Of course, if you joined us late, the story about Joe Canning, which was hush-hush for much of the week, is that uh, he didn't train for a week because he had a knee injury. I think it's the right knee which is giving him trouble. He's playing with a pain-killing injection. There he is. Poised and ready, having scored one point from a free already. And a little bit further out from where he scored the equalising point at the end of the draw match. He's put it over the bar, beautifully done. Well, yeah, that's a fabulous strike. You know, I don't. I've said this before in the commentary, but those frees are not easy. You know, out there, wind swirling round, and you know, a super strike and straight off the black spot again. And Kilkenny went short from the puck out to Jackie Turrell. This one lands in the hands of Tony O'Gregan, trying to get the hand pass outside. A bit slack, breaks down. Henry Shefflin takes, puts over the bar, playing on the 40. Henry Shefflin's now got three. That's the first one to come from play, and Kilkenny by two, 4-2. Four, 14 minutes are gone. Yeah, you're definitely seeing a big um, change in Kilkenny's forwards. They're tackling much harder. That was a mistake, though, again, by Tony O'Gregan. You know, he should have really got the hand pass away. And you can't be gifting scores like that to Henry Shefflin. Well, James Skehill is very much in that team because the management wanted to use his uh, very, very good puck outs. He's usually so good at placing it and keeping it away from Kilkenny's main influential figures. That time it was Joe Canning trying to take it in his stride. He felt it went off a Kilkenny player last, Henry Shefflin, but it's, it, in uh, fact, is going to be a Galway line ball. Just got a bit annoyed initially when he thought the decision wasn't going his way, Joe Canning. Line ball to be taken by Andy Smith. 29-year-old from Fort Umna cuts it up beautifully, but back there, sweeping, Brian Hogan, nobody on him. Damian Hayes has gone back around midfield, he's left a loose player back at the back for Kilkenny, and they're making use of that. Pressure on Kevin Hines now here. He's done very well so far in all the major championship matches. Tony O'Gregan now, big, huge clearance, and Hayes steps back into the forward line, and he tries to take on his man. It's still Damian Hayes here against Paul Murphy. The hand pass to Niall Burke, shooting this one waywardly and across the face of goal, and well to the right and wide, and it stays... Kilkenny in front by four points to two. Yeah, Damien Hayes was held up there, but I wonder was he fouled, you know, it looked to me like looked like he was fouled there. If you watch it here, when he gets possession, he turns to try to go for the goals, and well, maybe not, it was Paul Murphy just kept his hands out, and good, good defending, and Niall Burke, you know, had a good chance there, should really put it over as well. Well, it was uh, Jackie Turrell who was marking Damien Hayes during the draw match this time. Change of marking as Niall Dunny who plays it down. Once again, it's taken neatly here by Jackie Turrell. And back into the forwards it comes, in towards Henry Sheffield. He broke it down, intended for a colleague, but instead it's come out here, and it's coming away here by Johnny Cohen. Trying to drop it into the forwards there, in towards Damian Hayes in there as well. James Regan in the red helmet comes out to Hayes, makes a bit of space for himself, back as far as here, Latanian from 65 metres out, lets it in dangerously! of the match well they managed to keep one on one there and when it came into David Burke he managed to finish TJ Reid at the other end has put it over the bar and got a point back
but a goal coming after 16 minutes for David Burke has certainly lit up this match and the teams are level Galway a goal and two Kilkenny five points yeah Jared, David Burke made a great run there from off the ball in over the top and I'm not sure if he, you know, if he knew what he was doing, it's a great finish, but you know, I, I'm not sure if he did, but it ended up in the back of the net. But interestingly, Kilkenny poked it out straight away, picked it out of the net, Tommy Watts played a long ball, and TJ Reid caught it over the bar. Great start to this game. I thought it was very interesting that Galway managed to bring back their two corner forwards and leave David Burke in there in the full forward position. Right now, it's Richie Hogan here, surrounded. TJ Reid tries to take it, manages to take it away here, 22 metres out from the Galway goal, has to get rid of it. Back there, Ian Tanyan, back there as well as Joe Canning, two men with red helmets, into the forwards it goes, this time in there as far as Cyril Donnell in touch it, Bill Hayes, another one, David Burke's got a second! Two goals in the space of a minute by David Burke! 2-2 two, two to five points! It's Galway by three! Jared, that's as good a goal as you're ever going to see in an Ireland final, two brilliant passes, Damien Hayes, what he does so well. First of all, Cyril Donnellan, great catch, lays it off. But look at Damien Hayes, straight away switches the play, and David Burke puts it away. And Joe, what a passage to play there. You know, Richie Hogan had the ball that was taken off him. Uh, Earl Italian numbered the goal with uh, players back. And look where Joe Canning was, delivered a long ball from about 40 yards from his own goal. What a goal by Galway. Galway getting the two goals. 2-2 two, two to five points. Goal, Kilkenny's defence absolutely ripped apart there by the sheer movement of Galway, and it wasn't Joe Canning, he was back in midfield at that stage. Back comes Owen Larkin, Kilkenny now needing a boost. Larkin, the captain, stopped there by Scale, and in it goes, Richie Power. In the 19th minute, it's Richie Power who scores for Kilkenny and makes it 2-2 to 1-5. And it looks... Richie Power took a stroke after that, but he got up straight away there. Look at this now, Owen Larkin straight through, maybe could have passed it out to the left. Good save by James Scahill, but Richie Power, like all good corner forwards, in on top of it and flicked it into the net. Well, what James Scahill wasn't able to clear it away properly here once he made this save, Michael. Well, I think it was, you know, he hadn't much choice there. I think Jerry came at his head, he saved it, and it just bounced out to that angle. James McGrath in there immediately to consult two of his umpires behind that goal yeah, thought, at the Dallas end. I thought Earl Tanya might have been involved in something there. It'd be interesting to see if the umpire saw something. But Richie Power, in fairness, got back up on his feet straight away. Richie Power, the goal scorer, then fouled. And the referee now uh, having showing a yellow card to James Skettle. Got a yellow card as well in the drawn match. Well, you were looking at uh, another player, I think. Yeah, well, I wasn't sure now, you know, I was watching the goal, but uh, quite a few minutes of play. Just see James Cahill makes the save there. It's yeah, it wasn't uh, James Cahill. No, it should have been Irlitania. Irlitania. It was Irlitanian, but then Cahill came out after but definitely was involved. Well, Tanyan lucky not to get a yellow card there, didn't get anything. Back come Kilkenny again, Tommy Welch. Well, the body blow got two goals, the perfect response then, that goal by Richie Power, and we've got quite an All-Ireland final, as we anticipated. Team's level. It's a great passage of play, though, uh, Ger, you know, three, three goals, one maybe a little bit lucky, but the other two, uh, you know, great, as particularly goal was going, what a finish, and really this game, you know, it's, it's full of beans, even on the sideline there, you can see the tension is rising again, and it was an absolutely brilliant atmosphere. When you think about it, the Leinster final, which uh, Galway won handsomely, then that drawn match, but apart from uh, the Leinster final, which they won by about ten points, apart from that, there's very, very little between these teams. Thrilling fair. Packed house, Croke Park looking magnificent. It's got to be a line ball to Kilkenny. And it'll be TJ Reid taking this one. Straight to Irlitanian. Lucky to get away without a booking. In came Owen Larkin, and Owen Larkin flashes it over the bar. His first point. Got two points in the draw matched three weeks ago. He's now made it 1-6 uh, to 2-2. Two, two or Kilkenny by one. Yeah, great hook there by Richie Hogan, working hard like all the Kilkenny forwards are doing. So I just watch him coming out here. Great hook, early Tanya never saw him, and Owen Larkin overpicked it and a simple score over the bar. Seven scores so far for Kilkenny, four for Galway, but those two Galway goals, both scored by David Burke, crucially important. Pressure on, Jackie Tyrrell once again with Cyril Donnellan over there. In came Damien Hayes. 
Jackie Tyrrell has it. Pursued by those two Galway players, needing a little bit of help. Hayes pinching it, knocking it back into space here, intended for David Collins. Running all the way back is Andy Smith, further back, and he's given it away here as far as Richie Parr, the Kinney's goal scorer, from a huge distance out. How about that for a score? That's magnificent. Goal and a point by Richie Parr. And people were saying, you know, he was lucky to stay in the team. If Colin Fennelly got dropped, if uh, Aidan Fogarty got f dropped, he could have got dropped as well. But he's on, and he scored a goal and a point. Yeah, but that's, uh, you know, to me, that's at least three points that have come directly from mistakes by the Gal Galway. You know, they gave away a ball to Henry Shefton earlier. Another one, they're a great catcher by Niall Burke. So good in the air. Back to Ilitanian. Into space here, a lot of Kilkenny players there, however. That's fumbled by Michael Fennelly, scoops it back nonetheless. Once again, Jackie Turrell getting it out here. JJ Delaney helping it forward. A couple of players almost messing up that situation and Tommy Welch eventually getting it downfield. Beautifully caught again here by Walter Welch, a point scorer already. In here as far as Oil Larkin. Larkin dragged down there by the corner, the uh, halfback, Mal Donahue, and it's going to be a free in. And Galway's defence in serious trouble with the sheer movement of this Kilkenny attack, ruthlessly taking it forward. That's a yellow card there against uh, Niall Donoghue. Yeah, but it, it's really the you know the power of Walter Walsh there. He's keeping Johnny Cohn completely out of the game. Uh, he scored a point already, and he's been fouled for that free, and he's doing very very well. But all the Kilkenny forwards, Ger have really upped their game since the last day, and you know there's much more life in Richie Power. Owen Larkin's been in the game. Uh, they're all in the game, really. All the forwards and playing well. Four points for Henry Shefflin, now three of them coming from freeze, and it's Kilkenny by three once again. How they have recovered from those two goals inside a minute. 60 minutes, David Burke, 70 minutes, David Burke. Once again, it's going to be James Skell from Capitagal, the 24-year-old, born the year that goal will last won the All-Ireland, 1988. That's out by Tony O'Gregan. Here as far as David Collins, an experienced player. Tanya now looking to exert the kind of influence he exerted here three weeks ago. That's JJ Delaney bundled off it there by David Burke. Back to help out is Paul Murphy. A storming match in the drawn game. Huge one downfield again. Donahue's under it, so too Richie Parr breaks it into the centre. Henry Shefflin takes it. Shefflin sees the player loose inside him and finds him, finds him brilliantly. And it's Walter Welsh, and that one has gone over the bar. A second point for big Walter Welsh, the UCD student, and uh, Brian Cody rubbing his hands with some delight. That decision to play him has been a very successful one, but it was the pass that made it possible for Walter That's Welsh. That's it, a division there, you know, uh, it was David Collins got caught in two minds, didn't know whether to go to Henry Shelton or not, he gained possession, and, you know, a lovely ball straight into Walter Welsh's hand, he couldn't miss. This puck out again has gone to a Kilkenny player, and they're back once again, ruthlessly storming forward. Henry Shefflin over five for Henry Shefflin. Well, this man gave one of the greatest performances ever in an All Ireland hurling final in the second half last time, and he's doing something similar here. Yeah, he's drifting left and right. You know, he's dictating the game. A brilliant score again there. But Galway, look, they need to really now win a bit of possession around the half forward line and get into this game. You know, they got two goals there really against the run of play and they've gone out of the game again since then. It's been uh, one of the Galway failings, really. We think about the match matches recent times. They've gone ahead and then they've drifted back. They can't afford to do that against Kilkenny because Henry Shefflin is leading the attack once again here. Richie Parr coming onto it. Joe Canning back helping out. Goes as far as TJ Reid. Slipping past. After him goes Fergal Moore. Right on the sideline. And that one uh, was a very, very tight angle for him. Just a little bit too sharp that time. And missed by TJ Reid, who scored already. And it remains 1-10 for Kilkenny, 2-2 for Galway. And Galway looked like they could and did are about to make a change here. And that is uh, Joseph Cooney, son of Joe, who is a defender who will come in if needs be in the next couple of minutes. In as far as Richie Hogan this time, wearing number nine, playing it full forward, and such a smart operator, really gifted player. He's very much a big game performer, and he's made it 1-11 to 2-2. 12 scores for Kilkenny, still only four for Galway, and they've gone a long, long time now, Galway without scoring, since the 17th minute. Yeah, Jaron, that's all the Kilkenny forwards now have scored from play, you know, which is some different from the last day, where a lot of them were out of the game. They've all started brilliantly, 
but they're dominating out the field. They're just a monopoly on possession right around their half back line, middle of the field, and Galway just can't get their hands on the ball. And the, and you know Joe Cannon's out centre forward now, but there's no shape to them. The here are the goals once again. That was the first one by David Burke. Followed it in. The second one was beautifully created and expertly finished. They were delighted. But this was a response at the other end. It was by uh, Owen Larkin initially and then Richie Power after the save by James Skell. So 111 to 2 2. Yeah, and it's uh, now some nine minutes or so since uh, Galway last scored. It was a crucial, you know, when Galway got that first goal. Mark, David Hurley just picked the ball out of the net and poked it out immediately to Tommy Walsh and they ended up, TJ Reid scored a point from that and they got back on the front foot straight away and just reacted, they didn't dwell on it and look at, they're producing another awesome display here now and Galway really, they need, it, they need to get a score or two just to settle themselves down and get back into the game. As in the last match, only two players have scored for Galway so far, David Burke with the two goals, Joe Canning with the two points from freeze. And they've got another free now on the 45-metre line, Kilkenny's 45-metre line, so a chance to get one back. They are six behind at this stage, and we're about eight minutes to go to half-time. So ten minutes, really, since Galway got their last score, and that their second goal by David Burke. Joseph Cooney's coming on, and the player is going off is Niall Burke. So Niall Donoghue, I should say, is uh, the player who's uh, gone off, one of the Niles. Niall Donoghue, the uh, wing-back from Kilbacon team making way. Joseph Cooney from Sarsfields in Galway is on. Yeah, I'd, you know, Neil Donoghue has had a very good year. He's a good young player, but he's caught, caught in possession a little bit and the movement of the Kilkenny forwards really finding him out. So big move now to bring on Joseph Cooney. And Joe Canning, great catch there, showed great leadership, really. And, you know, just... There's a lot of time left in the game, there's six points down, but it's a good time to be behind, it gives them a chance to get back into the game. An important free and an important score. Third pointed free by Joe Canning. So they've gone 10 or 11 minutes without scoring, they have one back now, they're back within five. And Brian Hogan, by the way, has changed his jersey. He's now wearing number 31 and playing centre-half back as per usual. David Herity's puck out. Big one up, David Collins trying to cut it out, but all the breaking ball's been picked up there by Kilkenny players. That time it was by Killian Buckley, played under 21 against Clare recently when they lost that final in Thurley some two weeks ago. The Jerry, you know, kicked, there's, Kilkenny have scored eight points from play, Galway have scored no points from play. It's hard to believe a half an hour into an Ireland final, three frees is all they've got and two goals. You know, they really need to be popping over a couple of handy points, but they're not winning possession. You see it again here now, Kieran Joyce, a great catch. Fabulous catch. Good ball in towards Richie Power once again, but this time broken down and taken by Fergal Moore. Dragged to the ground, gets himself up quickly, pursued by Walter Welch, helped out here by Johnny Cohen. Big long clearance downfield, beautifully caught under pressure by Jackie Tyrrell. Out as far as Tommy Welch. Into space, there's nobody playing right corner forward at this stage, Tommy. So it's going to be a line ball to Galway. Some uh, five and a half minutes or so to go to half time. Well, the catching is superb, and there you saw Kieran Joyce, and we've had uh, Jackie Tyrrell involved as well. So good in the air, Kilkenny, so powerful. They've come here with a very, very strong attitude, a determination that they were going to get it right. Third time of asking against Galway. Johnny Cohen, poor line ball, straight to Henry Shefflin. Inside it goes towards Walter Welch, bundled off, but the referee says play on, Johnny Cohen does. Takes it across here, dangerously so, and the referee has uh, blown his whistle. Hurley was uh, thrown there, I think. Lost anyway. And referee James McGrath from the uh, Turin Hurling Club in Westmeath calling across. And I think he's just given a free out here. Well, I think he was actually... If Michael Finley threw the hurl, uh, it's a yellow card. I think he was waiting to book him, but Michael Finley just ran off out the field. If you just watch it here. <laughs> yeah, there's the hurl he yeah. been thrown. That should yeah. have been a yellow, card. a yellow card. And I think he was going to give a yellow card, but Michael Finley just kept going out the field and he blew the whistle to call him back in and he didn't come. Now, now, he's, now he's, he's going after to. going after him, you're right. James Scale has taken the free, but he'll have to take it again because the referee wants to complete the uh, paperwork here. And uh, he's got Michael Finley, the 27 year old <laughs> from Valley Hill Shamrocks way below his best in the drawn match. Remember, he's Hurler of the Year from 2011. He's got a yellow card here now. Back at his 21st championship match today. 
So James McGraw has now issued a first yellow card to a Kilkenny player, and I think he's given uh, three yellow cards in all, or is it uh, two? It's two yellow cards to Galway players, James Cahill and Niall Donoghue. From that free, back there is Paul Murphy, gathering its second attempt, clearing it away once again. No nonsense, no fuss, such a good cornerback. Up to Walter Welch, who gives this team some direction, this time taken by Johnny Cohen. Played back again by David Collins. Down into the corner, nobody waiting for it down there. So there's a chance for the uh, fullback JJ Delaney to go, collect, deliver, and hammer it upfield. Cooney beaten, that was brilliantly taken in the air there by Richie Hogan in midfield, was drifted out. Brian Hogan, his namesake, now wearing number 31 in the yellow helmet, making some progress, fancying a point himself, and it's stopped on the line by James Skehel. And Skehel stumbles, Walter Welch coming in, and the goalkeeper in difficulty, helped out by David Collins. And the goalkeeper and the uh, full forward tangled for a moment, Thankfully, it has uh, ceased, and play continues. Well, that could have been a very embarrassing moment there for James Skehel. Meanwhile, in the middle of the field, it's Irla Tanyan hitting it, but hitting it to the left and putting it wide. In spite of those two goals, in the space of 60 seconds, it's been a poor first half for Galway. Yeah, if you watch James Skehel here, he just brought the ball down, he lots of time, it's nothing to do with the shoulder, it just feet went from under him, and very, very lucky, but he did manage to... Kevin, uh, Kevin Hines came in and saved his blushes, but again, Earl Italian with a nice, you know, an easy enough chance to tap it over the bar. We saw Niall Burke earlier, and you know, Galway really haven't settled down at all. Could, could have been a free in there because I mean, he did pull down the forward after he stumbled with that ball. Play continues anyway, and it's out here as far as Owen Larkin once again. Back now, as far as the goal score for Kilkenny, Richie Power, and that one doesn't carry sufficiently for him and goes left. Yeah, John, I'm not sure how comfortable James Cahill looks after that, you know, to me... If you dislocate, look at his arm, the way he's holding it there, his left shoulder, and, uh, you know, if you dislocate his shoulder... So Johnny Glynn, number 19, is coming on in place of James Regan, who didn't really make any impact whatsoever in the 33 minutes that he was on. Johnny Glynn is intent on making an impact. That's interesting that Galway forced to make two changes before we reach half-time, and that's a statement of way, the way things have been going for them. All or nothing at this stage for Galway. They're only five points back, however, and that gives them a right good chance, even though they're playing poorly, and Kilkenny have been much the better team. Richie Power. Back out as far as Richie Hogan. And that one again to the left. Those two goals have been absolutely critical, I would argue, in keeping Galway afloat in this final. Exactly, Ger. You know, they're five points down, and you, know, you see that Kilkenny have had a couple of wides there now in the last few minutes. They're really dominating the game, apart from a couple of minutes when Galway got those two goals, and yet Galway are only five points down. So you know, it's, it's not all it's not all over, but they really have to start getting a foothold around the particularly under half forward and there's a lot of movement from the forwards, but they're just not winning possession. Well, this time Johnny Glynn has got in there. He's a big, strong. 19-year-old wearing number 19 as well. This time helped by Joe Canning. Can he give the leadership? That one is going away to the right-hand side, but it might yet come good and could do so for Cyril Donnell and his first touch was poor. And it enabled the half-back there, Tommy Welch, to go back and to get that ball away. In fact, it was eventually Killian Buckley, another man with a red helmet, who cleared it. Only out as far as Sir Tierla Tanyan, and Tanyan has put it to the left and he's put it wide. There was a chance there just a moment ago, but the first touch by Cyril Donlan wasn't good enough, and it gave Kilkenny a chance to go in and clear. It's going to be one minute of added time played, and we're into that now. But sure, that was a great chance again. You know, the ball broke. All Cyril Donlan do is, you know, pick the ball, and he, he had an open goal in front of him, and he ran straight over it, and Irla Tanyan again with another very poor wide from only 50 yards out. Here comes David Collins. Can Galway now get the last score of this first half? give them something to build upon for the second period. Cyril Donlan, JJ Delaney is on him. Cyril Donlan, and that one has gone in there and it's uh, gone off the defender and it's gone for a 65. First of this match, very late in the game. Cyril Donlan meaning business there, taking on JJ Delaney and finally the goalkeeper, who is David Herrod, he pulled it away for the 65. So a chance for Joe Canning to put it over and leave just four points between the teams 
which would be a huge boost for Galway and leave Kilkenny probably scratching their heads wondering how come Galway are this close to them. Joe Canning with three so far, all from freeze. And this one is straight over. And that is the last point and last score of the first half. Joe Canning with four then, but the all-important goals came for David Burke, 16 minutes and 17 minutes. That is the platform upon which Galway can build something, but Kilkenny were much, much the better team during the first half. Kilkenny got 11, got 12 scores in all. James Cahill is leaving the field, I can tell you, looking a little bit the worse for wear with his shoulder, but... Uh, Kilkenny with that goal by Richie Farr after 90 minutes that was a big boost for them they've been the better side during the opening 35 minutes of action but who's going to win the Liam McCarthy Cup for 2012 a lot to talk about our panel will have much to say and the second half coming your way at half time it's Kilkenny 111 Galway two goals and four we'll be back in a moment yeah we've just been uh, looking at the sub goalie as you say and uh, Fergal Flannery is the sub goalkeeper for Kilkenny, wearing number 16. So he's in there in place of James Skehel. There was a suggestion that uh, Colum Kalnan might also have come into the reckoning, but uh, I don't think that has been the case. Meanwhile, it's Richie Hogan advancing, and the keeper could be in uh, business here straight away, called into the action. That one has run out over the end line, and it's gone wide. Well, Jerry, I think if you look at that, there's some... Kevin Hines lost his horn, but he stayed with Richie Hogan, and I'm not sure if he didn't hook him with his arm. We might see a replay in a second here, but great defending, and really, Richie Hogan was odds on to score a goal there and maybe put this game away. If you watch it here, Kevin Hines lost the hurl. He's following in here. And Richie Hogan looks like all he's doing. Look at Kevin Hines, just got back. And uh, great defending, and the ball has gone wide. Ball pucked out into the uh, Galway half forward line. Towards Johnny Glynn in there, taken instead by Damian Hayes. Back out here as far as David Collins. Into open space. Every so often, there are big goal chances appearing there. And this time, the defence holds firm, and it's JJ Delaney able to take that one away. But I think a number of the Kilkenny fans' hearts in the mouth time. Out it comes once again towards David Collins. Galway needing a good second half and a good start to the second half. That's across towards Joe Cooney. Joe Cooney Jr., that is, into top of the right. And this race for possession is going to be won by Paul Murphy here. The young army man, all star, had a great season last year, doing very well in his second championship year all the way into midfield, once again it's taken here by Tony O'Gregan. Back up into the corner once again, and this time there is a man in the corner, and this time it's Cyril Donlan going across, trying to take on Paul Murphy, making an angle for himself, trying to eat into that uh, half-time lead of four points, not succeeding there. Yeah, you'd have to say, Jordan Galway's shooting, you know, has been so poor. Uh, that, that, you know, they haven't, they've scored no ball from, from play. I see David Hurley here, you know, he dropped the ball, and when the ball goes in, there, in around the full forward line, Galway do look dangerous, look like, you know, they've had a few goals, got the two goals, had a couple of more chances, and, uh, but really, look, they need to start winning a bit of possession and knocking over a couple of simple scores from play, because you can't win another and not score from play. Again, the ball is caught in midfield by Galway, again, it's uh, Joe Canning has gone in there to try and take the possession, leaving one man short inside, however, and it's Tommy Welch who emerges with this, out as far as Jackie Tyrrell, big long one down towards Richie Hogan once again, he's having quite a match causing major problems and underlining that with a lovely point here, point in each half for the uh, very talented Richie Hogan and really a big, big handful for Kevin Hines down there. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, very strong in the air, as Eddie Brennan said there at halftime, he's won a couple of great balls and he's, you know, I think he's 5 7 five, eight. Uh, one possession there again and simple score, tapped it over the bar and that's the difference between the teams, Kilkenny are scoring freely. And Kilkenny's work rate is very impressive this afternoon, really trying to work for a victory if they can get that. That's down by Jonathan Glynn as far as David Collins, they try to cut it out there, Michael Fennelly trying to do so, Niall Burke going back, going further away from goal, missing his touch, in to health came here, Latanian. Trying to play it out here was uh, Killian Buckley. Finally, it's back with Andy Smith. And a chance of a score here for Andy Smith. And he's put it over the bar. Beautifully done. He's a great driving force in midfield, Andy Smith. And that's his uh, first point. And Galway's first point of the match to come from play. That's right, Gerard. And you remember the first day 
Uh, Andy scored the first point from play after about eight minutes. They hadn't scored. It was a hugely important score. And I think that score, again, you know, they have to try to build on that now and win possession Galway if they want to get back into this game. Still four between them. TJ Reid out at left half forward now here. Going this way and that to try and hold on to it across towards Walter Welch at a good first half. He'd be very pleased with his debut. Slipping it back out to the captain, Owen Larkin. Trying to advance, difficult one here for Richie Hogan to get the stick to, he did well. The backs converge on it, it stays in play. Johnny Cohen tries to slip away with it, shouldered by Walter Welch. And the referee sees a Kilkenny player on the ground and he's blown his whistle. And the referee has noted the umpire who called for a 65, the ball had gone out. So two 65s in the space of the opening four minutes of this uh, second half. Kilkenny still in front by those four points. But you can see Jared Kilkenny going for the juggler, uh, Richie Hogan, first of all, after half time, headed for the goals. The same with Owen Larkin there. He could have tapped over a point, but he went for the goals. A good save by Fergal Flannery. But this move of Walter Walsh, I think, onto Johnny Conte has been you know, crucial in how the game has developed so far. He's, he's dominating and winning position and keeping Johnny Cohn out of the game. And Cohen hasn't been taken off him. Henry Shefflin hitting, and inevitably Henry Shefflin putting it over the bar from the 65. So that's six points now for Henry Shefflin, and Kilkenny's lead stretches to five. Early stages of the second half. Yeah, great strike, and Fergal Fenner in fairness stood his ground and a, and a good save. I think it was just here, Michael Fenner just knocked out Johnny Cohn out over the line. I'm not sure if the ball went over the line, though. From that puck out into the half forwards once again, this time it is uh, Brian Hogan. Over there came Killy, Killian Buckley, shouldered hard. Niall, Buck, Niall Burke got onto it, comes back out again into the middle of the field. They wait for it there, in particular Tony O'Gregan, and in sense which she par didn't like the decision, but it's going to be a free to goal way. Referee James McGraw whistling, and they still continue there with their argument, Richie Parr and uh, Tony O'Gregan. It's got to be a free, and it'll be Joe Canning who will take it. Yeah, we just see Galway, you know, it's so casual, uh, Gerrard, since, you know, that's about the fourth or fifth time uh, they've been caught in possession, you know, they got a free at the end of that, but just waiting for the ball, at this level you just can't wait, you have to step into the ball and get to it, and, uh, you know, they've been caught on a number of occasions with possession, and, and they've handed Kilkenny three or four points up to now. Well, there shouldn't be any nerves at this stage, but there should be oceans of desire where Galway's concerned, they are 24 years without the Liam McCarthy Cup, Joe Canning... The great talisman, number 14, ready to hit this. Four points in the first half, and this one has swung away to the left-hand side. It was always offline, it wasn't an easy one, and that sun now is in the eyes of the Galway backs for the second half. Shuddering collision here, Johnny Glynn was one of those involved, the other was Killian Buckley. Yeah, you know, a lot of those, you know, shoulder to shoulder or into the body, but that was a very, very hard hit, and... Uh Great block down there, Brian Hogan again, you know, and he's having a super game, he's holding the centre, and Niall Burke not in the game at all at centre forward. Kilkenny have it back, it's Killian Buckley once again. Oh, what about that for a steal from Johnny Glynn? Got the stick in quickly, knocked it away, but it's uh, going to be Kilkenny's possession. Brilliant defending there by young Johnny Glynn. Only a minor last year, played in this year's Under-21 Championship, where Galway, of course, went under to Kilkenny in the semi-final of that championship. And uh, goalkeeper is on right now. Fergal Flannery was in goal in that match. He's come on as a second half sub for James Skehill. Meanwhile, Henry Shefflin striking over his left shoulder, and this one has gone wide. And a little bit of wrestling immediately after that. David Collins involved with Henry Shefflin. Well, he's ferociously competitive, Henry Shefflin, and the referee has come in here now. He's been speaking to his linesman Barry Kelly, who was yeah. refereeing, of course, three weeks ago. I'd, I'd say it's Andy Smith and Henry Shepard. Every you know, there's been a lot of clashes between the two of them off the ball. If you watch here now, after the block again, Andy Smith follows through, and the two of them. Yeah, it was Andy. David Collins came in after that. Yeah, so, well, uh, it's unusual. The two of them haven't been carded. You know, Henry Shepard pulled. Uh, I know he, retali he retaliated, and you'd imagine both of them should have been booked. Fergal Flannery, who is Galway's third sub, used. Only to Owen Larkin. Back again it comes for Kilkenny, trying to build another attack here. Walter Welch trying to reach down to his bootlaces to get that ball up. Not easy when you're 6-3, six, 6-4. Six, ball comes back up here again, dangerously so to Damien Hayes. Hayes looking for a bit of room. Back to Cyril Donlan. Still Donlan, and the referee has blown his whistle. Doesn't count. 
The whistle went before the shot, and the goal doesn't count. David Berkson sends all the Galway fans all around Croke Park are annoyed by that, but the whistle did go, and there wasn't any advantage given. I know it did, Gerard, but you'd have to say Damien Hayes was more fouled, I'd say, than Sir Donlan, and Donlan was true, you know, given the benefit. Damien Hayes was definitely pulled back there, it should have been a free, it wasn't given. Then he gets out here, gives the ball here now, Donlan breaks through. And like, where was the foul there? He just broke the tackle, there was no foul, and... It, it probably was for the earlier one, so five points still between them, rather than two. Joe Canning is going call, to take Ger this free, big, it big, is a big call. It's a big call at this stage, he'll probably tap it over the bar. The angle is a bit tight for him, so he does do exactly that. And now it's uh, five points for Joe Canning. And there's uh, still a little row going on off the ball, heating up very, very considerably here. But that's a big, big uh, turning point in the game, Jerry. You it, it, there was a long time between the time that, that Damien Hayes was fouled and from the time he blew the whistle for Sir Donald. There were two separate incidents, and as far as I can see, Sir Donald wasn't fouled. He just broke the tackle and buried the ball, and I think that the, the free shouldn't have been given. Goal never counted anyway, and uh, one point for Joe Canning rather than three for Galway. Line ball coming up for Kilkenny. This one to be taken by Michael Fennelly. And the fans now raising the noise level very considerably. In as far as Henry Shefflin. Shefflin beats his man, Cooney goes after him. And Shefflin takes too many steps and it's a free out. The decision going against Henry Shefflin, free to Galway. Chance for them to launch another attack. It's taken quickly by Tony O'Gregan. Into those forwards who look to have plenty of scores among them if they can get decent ball in there in front of uh, David Herity's goal. Two goals from play in the first half. They're appealing this one here in particular, Cyril Donnellan. Linesman is there is uh, John Sexton from Cork, originally from Limerick. And it's a line ball given to Galway. Yeah, interesting to say, I think it might have been the other way, but... Sir Donnellan let it go as if it was a Galway ball, but I thought it might have come off himself, we'll see. Anthony cutting about a word there with the linesman, it's Joe Canning who's got to take it. Well, he's been known to put these over, can he do so? He certainly can! Oh, that's his trademark signature skill. Brilliantly done by Big Joe, who's got a sixth. And now it's 1.13 to 2.7. An absolutely brilliant piece of skill. I don't know whether it was going in or out. We didn't get a replay of that, but absolutely brilliant skill. And now we have a game on, a game on our hands. We have to say, goal. We have settled down really now and came with much more freedom than they did in the first half. Three between them. Big puck out. Missed there by Larkin. Back go the Galway halfbacks. Tony O'Gregan taking it. About to be blocked there by Richie Power. Coming in as well as Richie Hogan. Standing his ground there firmly as Fergal Moore. Knocked over by Richie Hogan, free out to Galway. And now Galway, as you say, Michael, they really are pumped up, but they're being productive in what they're doing in the second half. They were standing back too much in the first. Tony O'Gregan, a huge one up as far as Damian Hayes. About to be challenged by Jackie Tyrrell. A little hand pass inside here, in as far as Johnny Glynn. Played off here, in as far as Niall Burke, running into a lot of Kilkenny players. David Burke, his namesake in the green helmet, number 10, trying to come in to help. Picked up again by Niall Burke, slipped off there as far as Joe Canning. Off the post and back out. How did that stay out? It comes as far as TJ Reid, and it's a huge lead off for Kilkenny. Galway with one goal disallowed already, and now Joe Canning has hit the butt of the upright. Henry Shefflin at the other end, 65 metres from the Galway target, picks out a colleague over there. It's young Killian Buckley, the 20-year-old UCD student, who puts it over the bar. First point for him in this final, and Kilkenny fans are much, much happier. They lead once again by four, but there's a long time to go. We're only in the 13th minute of the second half. Yeah, Joe, but that's a four-point swing. What a shot by Joe Cannon, hits the very butt of the post and back out, and... Jonathan Glynn, you know, he had time to pick the ball again, he lost possession and the ball down the field, and that's a great score by Killian Buckley, a young player from the middle of the field, and he's done very well today. Well, there's no time for Galway to feel sorry for themselves, they've got plenty of time to do something about the scoreline. Tommy Welch trying to get the ball out, he was uh, felled after he played it away, and James McGrath goes in quickly, checks with his linesman over there, Barry Kelly, another West Smith man to see whether he got a better view of what happened, but there was, I think, a late challenge there on Tommy Welsh and the uh, player who's got to be spoken to. It's a red card for Cyril Donlan. Uh, I think the hurl was swung back. 
and it was Barry Kelly who called it. Now the linesman called it. He was right beside it. But you can see, as the JJ Delaney coming off, his head is split here. He's jogging off there, and let's have a look at it again. 49 it. minutes in. Yeah, he swung straight across the head. JJ Delaney was holding him back a bit, and he swung back and hit him. Yeah, and JJ has gone off there with a head injury as well. So Galway lose a man. They are four points behind. And Noel Hickey is going to come on as a temporary sub, I imagine, wearing number 17. So Noel Hickey, one of those hoping to collect a medal here today, which would be his ninth, watching as Richie Parr takes it in his stride and flawlessly glides it over the bar. He's got a goal and two points now, Richie, trying to emulate what his dad has done before and pick up yet another All-Ireland medal here. His dad, Richie Senior, was a star in the 80s, and Richie's starring here, and it's 115 to 27. It's 15 against 14 as well, of course. Yeah, that's a great catch, and what a turnaround, you know, the pressure has been on Richie, he hasn't played well since the Dublin game, the first round of the championship, by his huge high standards, but he's having a super game today, and back to Cyril Donlin there, you know, he was frustrated, but you can't just swing to her like that, across in the head area, and uh, JJ Dane looked at, picked up a nasty enough head injury, and I don't think the referee had any choice but to issue the straight right card. Just remember, he first uh, man to be sent over to the and hurling final, I think, since 1996, Wexford v Limerick, was it? Benny Dunn, Benny Dunn, Benny Dunn, 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 Dunn yeah, yeah, and then yes. not nice to see Galway having to uh, play the last 21 minutes without the full complement. Richard Parr got to stand over this one and take it quickly. In as far as Michael Fennelly from 50 meters out, Michael Fennelly now playing with a lot of confidence, and it's very much advantage the Cats as they go in search of another All-Ireland, and they lead by six. Yeah, Jerry. now both midfielders and all six forwards from Kilkenny have all scored from play, you know, which is a huge difference to, for, from uh, Galway. Andy Smith has got a point from play, and that's it. Uh, you know, the two goals from David Burke and freeze the line ball and, and a 65 from Joe Canning. And well, they're not, just not able to score points from open play. They'll rue the uh, missed opportunity there where Joe Canning's shot came off the post. They're under pressure here again now with Johnny Cohen. Going back in difficulty with Richie Hogan there. Cohen in the yellow helmet. Walter Welch, the big man, coming in to help out his number nine, who's playing full forward. And a real pile up there because Fergal Moore's there as well, and the referee is surely going to have to throw the ball in back out of the 20 metre line. How a game can turn around. Kilkenny did uh, most of the hurling in the first half under a lot of pressure in the opening 10 minutes or so of this. But then a goal disallowed, a shot that comes off the post, a man sent off, and now it's very much looking like the Cats. Do Galway have a response? They certainly have the time. Yeah, well, you'd have to say, can Kenny have it the better team? But as you say, you know, Galway will feel very hard done by over Sir Donald's goal, and then Joe Cannon hitting the post. You can do nothing about that, and the sending off, you know, it's unfortunate. I feel sorry for Sir Donald because he's a very sporting player. Um, but the ref had no choice there, and now, look at the, Kilkenny seem to be just turning the screw now, gone six points ahead. Back once again come Kilkenny. TJ Reid couldn't take it in his stride, but it comes back out here, and that is Walter Welch. He's got three points. Well, I was talking to Eddie Kerr yesterday about his debut in a replay back in 1959. He came on as a sub that day, he told me. Walter started, and he's got three against Anthony Cunningham's team. And Anthony Cunningham making another change now with Connor Cooney coming on, and the player is going off is Niall Burke. Scored a goal and two points in the uh, last match, Niall Burke, nothing today. Fergal Flannery talking it out. Caught here in the middle of the field by Michael Fennelly, on as far as TJ Reid. And Galway needing the next couple of scores here, they need to keep Kilkenny at bay and begin the recovery. David Collins, pursued there by Walter Welch. Back it comes once again here to David Collins. Big, huge one up there, but uh, that's where Kilkenny have the extra man. And it's Paul Murphy, who has nobody to mark right now, playing it way back down again, taken by the other number two, Johnny Cohen. Slipping it carefully in here as far as Johnny Glynn. Back into the centre here as far as Joseph Cooney, breaking the challenge there of Tommy Welch. And Cooney, like his dad before him, hitting it in, but not with the same kind of success. His dad will be remembered from the 1990 final. He got a goal and three in the first half of that. Absolutely started that match, but Galway didn't win. Yeah, and look, Jerry, it's very hard to see a way back for Galway now. They're seven points down. As you said, you know, 
Kilkenny have the luxury now of just leaving Tall Murphy free on the 21 and unless they're able to knock points over from distance they've no way back into this and just not able to get those scores so you know you just have to hope that they can in some way get back into it but Kilkenny playing very very well at the moment TJ Reid Andy Smith's after him and Smith has caught him and that's going to be a free in and uh, straight away Henry Shefflin went over to TJ Reid clapped him on the back and said well done it's another free in all these important little battles won inch by inch Kilkenny heading towards victory and it's interesting today Michael that Irla Tanyan and Andy Smith have not exerted that big influence in particular Tanyan that they had three weeks ago no they haven't uh, you know Brian Cody will be a genius again now you know Killian Buckley doing very very well and and as you mentioned Walter Walter what a final he's had what a debut uh, you know to come in an Ireland final and it's completely outplayed Johnny Cohen and you know but you saw there that's a silly free for Andy Smith uh, TJ Reid had no hurl Tony Regan was covering and give away another point now to Henry Sheffield Target practice for Henry with 50 minutes to go and up and over seven points now for Henry Sheffield, the man who is on the threshold of history. He will be the first man to win nine All Ireland medals out on the field of play. It's never been done before. They win all of them out on the field of play. Virgil Flannery goes short. Tanyan fumbles. Fortunate to get it back. Went, to, I thought, of Henry Sheffield, but no, the linesman. John Sexton thinks otherwise that it's going to be a line ball to Kilkenny. This will be taken by TJ Reid. Yeah, it might be a little bit far out. He's, he's actually excellent at ease. Real natural hurler, I always think, TJ Reid. Cuts it well, provides the service inside. Galway there in numbers. Coming out here is Kevin Hines. Hand passed forward as far as Andy Smith. Got a point earlier on. And what a piece of defending that was by Michael Fennelly. Just rejected, just saying to Andy Smith, thus far shall there go and absolutely no further. This was brilliantly done by Fennelly. Have a look at this again. Bang, where you go. Yeah, excellent timing there. And Michael Fennelly a lot stronger there. Still probably not at his best, but a lot better than he was the last time. This is out again as far as Richie Power. Chasing after him, Damian Hayes trying to hook him. Did enough. Tony O'Gregan from 65 metres out from his own goal. This would be a good point if it goes over. It's a great score. It's his first point in this year's championship. And Tony O'Gregan gets it back to a seven-point difference once again. 118-2-8. to Yeah, brilliant score by Tony O'Gregan. You know, again, giving it everything as he always does for Galway. But Joe they're, Canning, they're, well. going to, they're going to need a couple of goals if they're going to win this game. Well, they got two in the first half. Not able to add to it in the second, although they come very, very close. Tommy Welch much happier there in a conventional right half back position. Once Kilkenny went into the more traditional lineup, they had the measure of Galway in this particular game so far. Still time. Jackie Terrell, poor ball from Galway, gives Kilkenny a chance to counter attack. And it is Owen Larkin placing this one down beautifully into the hand of Richie Power. And that's nicely over the bar. It was the quality of the ball coming out to uh, Richie Hogan. And Richie Hogan took it into his hand, turned beautifully and put it over. Again, pressure on the Kilkenny backs. And it's Noel Hickey now levelling in the opportunity to get an opportunity to shine in this. He played in the Leinster final also against Galway, lost his place after that. Tony O'Gregan. Back once more, Damien Hayes tossling, and a real pile up there involving Killian Buckley in the red helmet as he tries to kick it forward. Richie Power this time stepped out over the sideline, ball was in play clearly. It's Richie Hogan, and who got that last point across towards Henry Shefflin, runs on to TJ Reid. Very awkward angle here, trying to make a better angle for himself. Cohen's in front of him. And that time it comes back, but it's put in the back of the net brilliantly. And that should be that. Walter Welch, his first ever goal in the championship, coming here in the final. He makes a 2.19 to 2.8, a goal after 58 minutes, a goal and three for Big Walter, and a great day for Kilkenny. TJ Reid initially turning inside Johnny Cohen, and watch as Flannery, the goalkeeper, got his stick to it batted it out only for big Walter Welch to be right on hand and place it in the back of the Galway net 11 
points between the teams. Yeah, Jerry, you'll have to say, you know, good save again by Fergal Flannery, but didn't get the ball away. And what a debut for Walter Walsh, you know, and, and in the, the Kilkenny full forward line in general. One three for Walter Walsh, three points for uh, Richie Hogan, and the two of them have been absolutely outstanding. And Walter Welsh is going off to a huge round of applause. Listen to this. A young star has come of age here. Colin Fennelly comes in in his stead. There's a free to kill Kenny. And it is party time for Henry and the rest, even though he puts this one wide. But uh, they have a lead of 2.19 to 2.8. It's, it's, it's obviously very hard to keep Brian Cody happy. Taking, I know he's only bringing on Colin Fennelly. You know, he's been... A, been on the team all year, but Walter Walsh won three. What a what a game he's after having and making way now. And Colin Finley's going to be hungry now to get his name on the score sheet as well. As David Collins, who'll be bitterly disappointed with the way things have gone, was carrying that through, but there were too many steps taken, and it's going to be uh, a free downfield. I'm sure people all over the world are fascinated by what they are seeing in today's match. And uh, I know Jerry Grogan, who's our PA announcer here has uh, son Dermot watching in Shanghai with his girlfriend Liz and wherever you are around the world in particular I suppose if you're Kilkenny fans you are enjoying it Tony O'Gregan got the last yellow card as this free comes in and this one goes over the bar they can do absolutely nothing wrong at this stage and Kieran Joyce the one who got that point his first ever in the championship 2.20 to 2.8. What a disappointing day it is for Galway. I think the question I posed at the very beginning, do you get just one shot at a team like Kilkenny? Well, certainly a completely different game today, a different attitude from Kilkenny from the start. Went back to the basics, traditional style, just marked the space in the back line, picked up the man that came around him and just been brilliant from the start. They're coming again, but this time it's a lovely catch under pressure by Fergal Moore, the captain. Back into the forwards it goes, beyond Kieran Joyce, runs on towards Joe Canning. Well, Galway fans would have wished him to spend more of the game in at full forward, where he might have been more of a threat, but he's been out working, busy. The ball hasn't come in, and uh, Kilkenny have been relatively comfortable during the second half. Back out again it comes here to Joseph Cooney, and uh, he was fouled, and it's going to be a free to Galway. Late in the match, we're in the uh, 61st minute, as you can see. Yeah, John, you were mentioning a few people overseas. Uh, two Manu College shoots, Mark Power from Kildare and Sam Hart from Wexford. They're watching the match in Tuscan, Arizona. It's great that people can tune into the match all over the world. And that is put in there by Tony O'Gregan, but collected back down there by Kieran Joyce. Puts his head down, gets it away smartly. Out as far as TJ Reid comes back in here once again. Andy Smith trying to cause a little bit of consternation for the Kilkenny backs. But Galway players almost doing it like individuals at this stage. The greater measurement is coming from Kilkenny. It's a measured approach all the way from Killian Buckley in there as far as the substitute. And Colin Fennelly announces his return by putting it in the back of the Galway net. Goal number three for Kilkenny. And now they are simply routing Galway. He's not on too long, Colin Fennelly, but he's got another goal here, and the manager is happy, 62 minutes in. Well, Brian Cody is going to be thrilled, you know, he got it bang on today, Walter Walsh and Johnny Cohen did his job, took him off, and Colin Fennelly coming on, obviously, very disappointed not to be playing, hungry, you know, when the game may be well won, but, you know, used his strength there, held off uh, the defender, and, you know, one-handed into the back of the net, and really, you know, it's... It's, got, it's, it's so one-sided now, and Galway really you know, well, some had their the chances fans, the last day. Some of the fans leaving, 33 coming back on for Kilkenny. I think that is JJ Delaney, isn't it? Wearing number 33. Yeah, he's, he's back on there. And uh, Noel Hickey, presumably, is the one who has made way. But that was a temporary sub anyway. I noticed that Davy Glennon's waiting for his opportunity to come back in, the man who... Uh, Rescued Galway in many respects by uh, getting that free off uh, Jackie Tyrrell on the drawn game right at late in the match in extra time. Right now it's a case of Galway trying to put a bit more respectability on the final scoreline. Joe Canning leaving it off here, Damien Hayes couldn't take it, back out came Andy Smith, but the challenges are coming in strong and vigorously now from the likes of Jackie Tyrrell, that time a little bit too vigorously. But Kilkenny will be absolutely delighted with this. It's a, it's a small county, relatively speaking. There are only 12 senior clubs in Kilkenny. But my goodness, how they do the business time and again. 
It's Davy Glennon is the one who comes on, and the player going off is Andy Smith. Well, he gets a chance to play in the final once again, Davy Glennon, but he's coming on late at this stage to try and rescue it with the full 15 points between the teams. And that uh, is reduced by one, thanks to Joe Canning, his seventh point of this final. But Jared just shows you, you know, the backdoor system is here to stay. Kilkenny beaten, well beaten in the Leinster final and looked dead and buried and back they've come through. The, the system is there for them. Looked spooked the last day against Galway. It took them an awful long time to settle, but they finished very strongly the last day. They brought that straight to the game uh, today and, you know, really it's just turned into a rout now at this stage. Well, it's their sixth championship match. I'm reminded that when you won in 1998, also coming through the back door for Offaly, you played eight matches that year. Galway trying to set up another late chance, and that one's uh, run on and on and on, and it's gone wide. The backdoor winners of the McCarthy Cup so far, as we see TJ Reid receive some attention, have included Offaly and, of course, Cork in 2004 and Tip some two years ago. Yeah, it's brilliant for, I think, for, for the county players. You see TJ Reid now, Earl Latanian there, a bit of a stroke, and he's gone out past him, and he's been involved in a lot of stuff today, Earl Latanian, and not as influential in the game, you know, he had a super game the last day, but Killian Buckley has won that battle today. Did get an injury right at the very, very beginning, you might remember uh, Dr Dan Murphy was on to attend to him, not sure if that affected his performance in any way, I doubt it because Kilkenny have been absolutely overwhelming masters, and there is uh, number 17, Noel Hickey, coming back in here. And Kieran Joyce is the one who makes way on this occasion. He played well, Kieran, and I think it's Brian Cody's way of saying to all of the panel, as far as he can, go out there and enjoy the last few minutes. Yeah, what a servant Noel Hickey has been to Kilkenny over the years, and you know to stick with it. A player with eight all earned medals, not getting on the team, but he stuck with it all year. Uh, played in the Leicester final this year, and now he's coming on here now, also to win his ninth all Ireland. Uh, obviously didn't start them all, but an absolutely brilliant fullback over the years. Jackie Turrell waited. This time stepping in is Johnny Glynn. What about that? Galway want to finish with a flourish. They may be beaten, but they're not completely and absolutely down. And they have young stars to look ahead to at future years, like 19-year-old Jonathan Glynn. And this was a fair old rasper. And that is the sixth goal of this final. Yeah, Joe, that's a brilliant goal. You know, show great footwork, first of all, sidestep Paul Murphy as if he wasn't there, and then, you know, to hang one up in the top of the net like that. Great goal, and he is a very, very good player, very good in the air, and he's definitely going to have a huge career ahead of him. TJ Reid, I think, is the one who's in injury difficulty, and uh, Aidan Fogarty has come on in his stead. Here's Paul Murphy. Not a good clearance, only there as far as Conor Cooney. Back to Murphy again, tidy as ever, even when they're... Winning by a wide old margin, he's still doing the simple things effectively. And there was uh, Taggy Fogarty in towards the end of that one, anxious to try and get a goal like Colin Fennelly did earlier on. And they would have been particularly annoyed, wounded by the fact that they were left out of the side. But Taggy is a great player, and uh, what a vital servant for Kilkenny hurling he has been. 3.20 to 3.9, so high scoring. Who would have expected it to be quite this? Henry Shefflin ready to hit this one, and he puts it straight over. Henry's got eight. So tonight, of course, you can see the celebrations at the Victory Hotel, and that's in the Sunday game. It's at 9.30 on RTE2. Lots to look forward to there with Des Cahill. Before all of that on radio on RTE1, Brian Carty's on air at six with his championship uh, look back. And uh, Damien O'Reilly at seven o'clock on RTE1. Chance for you to air your views. Fergal Flannery's in difficulty because Aidan Fogarty has stolen it from him. The referee's whistle has signaled and it's going to be a free in. And they're still causing problems and they still are looking for more Kilkenny. Well, see, the hunger is still there, Aidan Fogarty would not be happy, a very, very you know, tough competitor, wouldn't be happy to be left off the team, had a, you know, had a great semi-final, was, was no better or worse than a lot of them in the final, but you know, he had to make way and to have him and Colin Fenley coming in, mad hungry. And Ger, I just want to say a very special hello to a young man in Kildare, Jason Dowling, Kyle Dovgia, a great young hurler, he's very unwell at the moment, just a man in his early 30s and uh, he's gone into the hospice in Kildare last Friday, I was up with him a couple of weeks ago there, and I'd love just to wish him all the best, he's a huge hurling fan, 
I know I'll be watching today, and Jason, we're all thinking of you. Certainly are, and uh, Henry Shefflin's got a ninth, and there is the Liam McCarthy Cup, the big trophy in this wonderful sport of ours. And Kilkenny will be getting their hands on it very, very shortly, in spite of the best efforts of Joseph Cooney there, just to try and delay the inevitable, but we're in the 69th minute. Galway, I suppose, had their chance early stages of the second half when his team saw a goal chalked off by the referee, James McGrath, and then when Joe Canning hit a post shortly after that, and Galway, a little later, went down to 14 players. Since then, it's looked good for Kilkenny, for David Herity, even though he has conceded three goals here this afternoon. Overall, a winning performance by Kilkenny as we head towards the 70-minute point. I think you're right there, Jerry. It doesn't tell the full picture. You know, if, if that goal was allowed and if Joe Cannon's goal had to hit the post, you know, you can't, it looks so comfortable now for Kilkenny and we had to send it off as well. It really went away from Galway in that few minutes spell. And, but that's how ruthless Kilkenny are. When they get on top, they just put you away. And, you know, it's been a very, very, very good team performance by all the Kilkenny players. You can't really say any of them played badly. Walter Walsh taken off after scoring 1 3. Kieran Joyce had a very, very solid game. He was the other man taken off. And, uh, you know, they've been very, very good. Every one of them have been very good. Richie Parr now from the angle shooting this one but shooting it in towards Hill 16 and away to the left hand side and he's missed the opportunity one minute of added time is going to be played now so for Galway a bitter disappointment once again yet another final loss for them this is David Burke got the two goals earlier on and that is Joe Canning and he puts it over the bar he's got eight points in this final not enough so well, that's the first point, point play, to first point from play from McGalway forward in injury time, and that's really the, the story of the game. Galway will now have... Oh, how about that? That's just gone to the right. Galway will now have lost some 10 finals of uh, 14 played since 1975. Quite a poor record. They're going again here with Conor Cooney. Back up in here towards... Their goal scorer Johnny Glynn in the second half. And certainly he's a name to look out for. He was stretching out with his right hip that time. Shot comes straight back as far as Paul Murphy. Referee has been uh, looking at his watch. Only a few seconds to go now before the celebrations can begin for Kilkenny. Galway finishing with Damien Hayes here, trying to set up another chance for Joe Canning. And that one has gone over the bar brilliantly from play this time. He's got nine points in this final, but it's the final whistle. And Kilkenny are the winners, the masters here. 11 points between the teams at the end. Kilkenny once again the All-Ireland champions. And another triumph for Brian Cody. And there you see Henry Shefflin, first man to win nine All-Ireland medals out on the field of play. And that McCarthy Cup going back down to Kilkenny tomorrow night. They've all played their part. Tommy Welsh there jumping for joy. The honour is stacking up, really, for this the greatest hurling team that we've been privileged to see. That's nine All-Ireland wins now for Brian Cody in 14 years. Nine medals on the field to play for this man. One of the greatest ever, Henry Shefflin. Joined on that mark, of course, today by Noel Hickey as well, who came on and played a part. And they joined former goalkeeper Noel Skehan, who also has nine medals. A day of bitter disappointment for Galway. Well, they knew all along that trying to beat Kilkenny twice in the one championship season was going to be a big, big ask. He got nine points, Joe Canning. He held his nerve in the draw match and took it to a replay. But it's been all about Kilkenny from the time Galway went down to 14 players after 49 minutes when Cyril Donlan was dismissed for a straight red car. Six wins for Kilkenny in the last seven years. An amazing record. And it is party time once again for Kilkenny and their hurlers. Another magnificent triumph for Brian Cody and the management team. Well... Three men now sharing nine All-Ireland medals. Nolski and the goalkeeper won a couple of those as a substitute. Many on the field as well, but Henry Shefflin's the first one to win all nine on the field of play. 
and a great day for Walter Walsh here. Here he is. Tremendous performance, really. Plays for Tulliher Ross Birkin, a UCD student, and he comes on, makes his debut in this replay and scores a goal and three points. Yeah, that's what dreams are made of, Gerard. You know, at Brian Cody, you know, if these things don't work out, it was a huge gamble in some people's books, but I didn't feel it was because he was leaving his options open. He had Colin Fenley and Adrian Fogarty to come in. But Walt, that was a huge part, I think, of the win of this game. Walter Walsh kept Johnny Cohn completely out of the game. Now, you don't normally have to keep cornerbacks out of the game, but Johnny Cohn has been so influential and in setting up so many of the Galway moves. Brian Cody pinpointed him, put Walter Walsh on him to win possession, and he ended up scoring 1-3 as well. So that worked hugely. And you see Henry Shefton there again. You know, Brian Cody, Henry Shefton. They're joined at the hip since 99. Henry Shefton has started every championship match since 1999 for Kilkenny. It's incredible. But that's you know, 62, 60, championship 62 championship matches. Yeah. He's had two crucial ligaments, he's had a serious shoulder injury, he's come back from them all, and he's here now, he's here in the middle of the field being interviewed. Let's hear Henry. I mean, for my family at home, you know, to be the only man in Ireland, myself and Noel Hickey today, to win nine Ireland medals, it's absolutely special, and uh, absolutely thrilled. And once again, you led from the front, and a terrific performance from all of the Kilkenny forwards today. Yeah, I think we knew the last time we didn't work hard enough, and that was one of the things we've we've won our Irons down through the years, so work great, and uh, I think today the lads just upped it completely, and uh, we knew because Galvez are after putting up to us twice this year already, and we knew it had to be a big performance out of us, so we're absolutely thrilled the way it went, and uh, you know I suppose there were some question marks hanging over us, and uh, I think we answered them today. Terrific performance, congratulations, Henry. Thanks very much, there. Thank you. Well, he's one of the greatest sportsmen I think I've ever seen, arguably the greatest player of his generation and so Kilkenny now come up the steps here to take that McCarthy Cup back with him, Rackard Cody there, the kit manager, very very popular figure the fans have had a great day out and Brian Cody as a player he won four All-Ireland medals himself but as a coach and as a manager his record is unparalleled and unlikely to be ever succeeded, heaven help anybody who replaces Brian Cody Wallam Trace Lou O'Cree, the Farrow Wine, Agus and Neil O'Cree, Ega and you. Cogardicus Henry, as an Ega Cambra today, you got a new. Wallam Wilkes of all, the Guinness Centre, Agus Etihad, as an Oreo to Hogan Shield, and Pray of Shaw. Agus is Kush Ohish. August and Nora Dominish, Corn and Verna, our own Larkin, Captain Kilkenny, Pogarda gets Kilkenny. Liam O'Neill, GAA president, handing over the Liam McCarthy Cup to Owen Larkin of James Stevens, Captain of Kilkenny, Champions of Ireland, All Ireland winners 2012. Celebration time. Very, very popular captain Owen Larkin. Had a great game in the league final when they won that back in May. And now he's captained the team in the replay to win the championship. Who's on the hair? Who's on the loop last game? A great news there. That was the card. The same captain lost shot to a winter kill critic and air. Neil Misha, Augie Glocka, and Corrin Shaw, their son, Mutar Kilkenny! <laughs> Gowan Weekes, you got dinner, a cowering in a corner, a book in the Rish and Lina. It's a great honour that I stand up here, here and collect this cup on behalf of these Kilkenny players. We've had great times in the past, 
And today is another chapter in that story. Before I go any further, I want to mention one man. This man has suffered more than most at the hands of injuries, and still he comes back. If you're looking for a role model, for dedication, for leadership, for hurling skill, this is the man you'd pick. That man is Michael Rice. As you know, success doesn't come easy, and there's a lot of people we have to thank for that. First of all, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Avonmore Glambia. They've been fantastic over the last number of years, and again this year was no different. Thanks a million. I'd like to thank our own county board, led by Paul Kinsley and Ed Quinn. They're doing thankless work. But again, they're doing a great job. Thanks a million. I'd like to thank my old club, James Stevens, for giving me this great honour. Without them, I wouldn't be here. I'd like to thank Eamon Langton and the staff at Langton House Hotel for looking after us all year. Thanks a million, Eamon. I'd like to thank our backroom staff, starting with our doctor, Dr. Ty Crowley. Our dietitian, Noreen Roach. Our physios, Neil Byrne, John Kearns and Kevin Curran. Thanks a million. I'd like to thank our kid man, Dennis Racker Cody. And now on to the three wise men. Martin Fogarty has been a revelation in Kilkenny since he came on board. I think they're now calling him Stats All. Thanks a million, Martin. And to Mick Dempsey, our physical trainer, I think he has to be regarded as one of the best trainers in Ireland at this present time. Thanks a million, Mick. And on to the next man. Well, what can you say? The only record we want to know is nine All Ireland senior hurling titles for Kilkenny. Thanks a million, Brian Cody. <laughs> Lastly, I'd like to thank Galway. It was a great sport and game. You came, you've come on an awful lot over the year and you've took your first Lancer title. I have no doubt you'll be back again. Three cheers for Galway. Hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. One more thing. Ladies and gentlemen of the Kenny, Lee McCarthy is coming home to the Nuller once more. from this week, a little duet. So, Kilkenny take the trophy once again, and it's a Kilkenny team that has never won an All... Well, only once ever have they won an All-Ireland without scoring a goal during the course of the championship. That was back in 1947, but today there were goals. Yeah, there was indeed. There was indeed your three goals today, and, you know, maybe not of the most cl classic uh, goals we've ever seen from Kilkenny. But you know, you have to think of Galway as well, Joe. What a year they've had. Uh, won the first ever Leicester Championship, historic. They've played some brilliant hurling all year. And you know, you feel sorry for Here's the first goal. Good save by James Scal and Richie Power. Predator there, you know, just in on the ball. Quickly adjusted there and one handed. 
And again here, another ball being blocked down, this time by Fergal Flannery, and again, Walter Walsh coming in this time. And that, you know, young, young lads at home watching, that's what you do, you follow in every ball, you wait for it to break out for you, and then call it fair. It's amazing how similar the three goals were. They were all just sort of tap-ins from five or six yards, one-handed, two of them, and uh, that's what Kenny do. But, you know, I was just saying about Galway there, Jared, you know, they've really brightened up this championship. It's a terrible for them to be beaten like that. You take Joe Cannon, you could see it in his face there. You know, to have such a year to, you know, to score one nine the last uh, nine points today and to be beaten like that in the Northern final. But, you know, to have, as I said, produce some brilliant hurling, some great sportsmen on their team, and they will be back. And I'm not patronising them. I think Anthony Cunningham has brought a different attitude to them. Uh, you know, there's a harder edge about them this year. But at the end of the day, it's all about Kilkenny, and uh, there's Richie Power now. I don't yeah. think. I don't know if that's his own young lad, I don't know. I don't know much about it. It looks, it looks like another generation it looks of like powers a, it, to it me. It looks like another power, all right. There's a lot of them down there. Young John coming as well, the under-21s. And I had a cup of coffee with Richie Senior the other morning, and he was nervous about the game. You know, Galway really spooked him this year, but fantastic display by Kilkenny, and well done. Yes, Kilkenny the champions, thank you, Michael. Final score, it's Kilkenny, three goals and 22 points. Galway, three goals and 11.